Tonight, we look at in the new dawn, women in the new dawn. And uh, to help us uh, discuss uh, women in the new dawn is uh, a member of parliament representing one of the biggest constituencies in this country. We are talking about Kembe. Her name is uh, Honorable Princess Kasune. Honorable, good evening and welcome to the interview. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chifokolo. It's good to, to come back after a very <laughs> rigorous campaign. Mm. Yeah, the last time I was here and um, it's a really humbling experience to be back. Mm. And uh, not on the opposition side, mm. but uh, part of the ruling party through His Excellency Hakainde Ichilema. And uh, really, as you already alluded to, on a very historical day where we not only did we see the first female uh, speaker of the House of the National Assembly, um, uh, Right Honorable Nelly Muti, but also the second uh, debut speaker, uh, that is uh, Attractor um, Chisangano, Chisangano, and uh, who was a colleague uh, in the Committee on Health, uh, and to see her as the second, uh, uh, first deputy speaker, it's really a humbling day, and history has been made. And I'm sure we'll discuss more about women in politics and mm. uh, my thoughts on it. Mm. My name is Kelvin Tabola, Chief Focal, and this is uh, the special interview. Those of you that are watching us on a movie, TV Decoder, many thanks to you, and may you continue to pay your subscription fees. Those of you that are joining us on... Uh, Facebook or social media, yours is Ask Movie. We are looking at women in the new dawn, and my guest is Honorable Princess Kasune. Honorable, like you've put it, that uh, the last time that you made an appearance on movie television, you were in the opposition, and now you are part of the ruling, or you are a member of parliament representing the ruling party. How does it feel to be a member of parliament rep uh, representing, uh, you know, uh, being one of those members of parliament in the ruling party? Well, I think uh, there is euphoria everywhere, especially out there. But I think as a member of parliament, you realize the weight. Uh, the expectation is so high. A lot of people are calling you, I'm looking for a job. Uh, of course, it's after congratulation. Mm. And then, well, I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for this business. Uh, especially our young people. I think they're very expectant of the, the, the president's plan. Uh, in terms of uh, his governance, in terms of his uh, leadership, and uh, in terms of his service to this country. And I think what is critical for us is to realize that uh, that can only be achieved through hard work, and it will mean all of us working. I think uh, from time to time, uh, His Excellency has tried also to, to make sure that the expectation of uh, being in the ruling party, the expectation from the, our youths is also made with the personal responsibility. So it's not just about what will this country do for me, but also what will I bring to the table in terms of contributing to the country. And, uh, you know, that we, are love, we have a lot of youths uh, or young people who have the qualifications, uh, but uh, because I represent a rural constituency, it is also true that some of my people don't have those white collar job uh, uh, qualifications. So I think one of the challenges we will have is to ensure that we create opportunities for people who are talented in whatever talents they have and uh, people who may never have the opportunity to go to university because things in the former uh, the ruling party wasn't so good and we saw that uh, a lot of our girls were left behind a lot of our youths especially in rural areas they didn't have the needed skill a lot of the programs we are so um, done on political lines which is really something that is very distest uh, uh, distasteful uh, I hate it personally and I think this president also doesn't like it we believe that uh, uh, development has to go into all the corners of Zambia. Of course, being mindful where there's already development and where there isn't development. So that is my take on uh, the expectation and ha the harm feeling. Uh, but in terms of uh, my personal feelings as an individual, I have tendencies to not feel things when they're happening. Mm. It is only when maybe the, the wheels begin to move that I begin to say, wow, okay, we are in the uh, ruling party. Uh, but for me, I think it, it begs for very high responsibility. It calls for a lot of work. And I think it's a great opportunity 
but also a great responsibility that we should take, uh, not lightly, but uh, commit uh, to make this uh, country much of uh, a better country. How easy or hard it is for a woman to be a member of parliament for one of the biggest constituency in the land or in the country, and also this is a rural constituency. How hard or easy has it been for you now that you're coming back or you've come back to parliament for the second time? How easy has it been or, or, or difficult or hard has it been for you now that you have been a member of parliament for one of the biggest uh, constituencies in, in Zambia and also a rural constituency? Yeah, thank you for that question. I, I really hope that uh, one of the things that uh, this government will do is to increase CDF. Uh, because uh, really at the end of the day, a lot of uh, expectation, a lot of excitement in the rural areas is around community development fund, which is CDF. And if you remember, I think it was it a 1.4 million kwacha. Um, that's not a lot of money. That is a drop in the ocean. And when you saw how the dollar was acting up, it really left uh, constituencies like Kembe constituencies very vulnerable. But again, maybe it was the style of the PF government, they really didn't look into the issue of you cannot compare Kembe constituency so undeveloped to maybe a Kabwata, for example, or Lusaka Central. There are needs there, but I think the, the uniqueness is so great that you need to give special attention to rural constituencies. Constituency like Kasempa, constituency like Bahati, and many others, you know. So I think one of the challenges or one of the difficulties is being a member of parliament in a rural area where the expectation is so much highly on the member of parliament. Mm. And the CDF, the Community Development Fund, was not given on time. And they only gave us, was it two times? So really, it left a lot of uh, uh, challenges for the Member of Parliament. So for me, one of the strengths that I had, I really reached out to a lot of friends outside the country, uh, a lot of uh, non-governmental organization. Uh, I founded a non-for-profit organization called Fountain of Life Africa, even though I'm no longer active in that organization. But I really kept engaging them. I engaged organizations like Living Water, for example, uh, which... Uh, the president of Living Water, um, um, Dr. Mike Montel, is my mentor and uh, literally my big brother. He was my boss when I worked for World Vision in the U.S. in Chicago. So I, I've taken advantage of this non-government uh, organization, World Vision, and I hope that many others will come. Because at the end of the day, it is not the work of those non-government organizations, but they come to complement the government of the day. So uh, coming back for the second time, I think it's peak volume. Uh, you know, when I was campaigning, I had this plaque which said, her work speaks for herself. Mm. I, I think one of the other things that I did, uh, even when I was campaigning, I clearly told them, if you are looking for a member of parliament who is going to give you handouts, who is going to buy you, I don't know, what's the, what's the beer now apart from Chibuku? In my days, it was Chibuku. I don't know what's out there. Is it Sko or mm. Kantobo? You know, there are all these names. Then I'm not the right member of parliament. Uh, mine is that I will work with you, I will advocate with you, and we are going to strive to develop the Kembe constituency together. It means that you may not see the benefit, you as an individual, mm. but you may see the benefit of schools, uh, clinics, uh, water boreholes, and things like that. And the casting point is that we are building uh, a mini hospital in Chiuni in Chief Chitanda area. We have built some clinics through partners, of course. And we have sent some children to universities, some outside the country. I took advantage of uh, the higher education, especially when uh, Honorable Kanduluo was there. So we have uh, doctors studying in Russia and uh, some pharmacists. So it's a combination of things, and I think the people felt that I should come back again. And I all it up to them. But I think it's also telling them the role of a member of parliament. Mm. Er, the member of parliament has no fund of our own to give you apart from the community development fund and of course to tell them that if the Landres Mumba Road which is the sword to my eye and to a lot of the Cambians as I call them it's not because of me. This solely lies into the hands of uh, 
housing and infrastructure, Ministry of Housing and Infrastructure, and the government of the day. Mm -hmm. So I hope that one of the achievements in this new dawn, in this new government, is that the Landris Mumba Road, which is an economical road, which is a road where trucks are now passing through because it's a shortcut to Mumba and Western Province. Mm -hmm. So it continue to wear out the 38 uh, kilometers which were left 10 year over 10 years ago by by Mwila is still not completed it's not a failure on the member of parliament but the line ministry which is responsible in putting up uh, infrastructure so mm -hmm. i think we need to educate our people what is the role of the member of parliament where does her powers or her uh, role ends because i think a lot of them because they don't have access to the line ministries, they don't have access to the president, and you become <laughs> the center of everything. Mm. And unfortunate, I think a lot of members end up uh, becoming casualties, as we have seen. Only about, is it 35% or 35%, maybe 38 members of parliament have come back. It's a sad reality. The turnover is very high. Mm. You, you've talked about um, CDF and... Um You've, uh, you've, you've mentioned that um, uh, rural constituencies depend on CDF and uh, in the past administration, the five years uh, of um, the, the last five years of the PF, uh, members of parliament were only, were only given CDF twice. Um, but the past administration boasted and among their campaigns uh, prior to the elections were saying they have uh, taken, let's start with the issues of um, uh, taking health services closer to the people, they boasted to say they have, uh, you know, built hospitals, they have built clinics, you know, and taken health services closer to the people. In Kembe, bring us to speed. Have you benefited uh, when it comes to issues of health by taking health services closer to the people in terms of, uh, you know, clinics? You've mentioned that you're building a mini hospital. And that is through the partnership of uh, an organization yes. called Fountain of Life. Yes. I have to say that um, one of the issues that... Uh, we really need to appreciate as Zambians is that we are not well developed. And I think some of the things that uh, the PF government did in part, these are things which should have been done 20, 30 years ago, in my view. Unfortunate, we are still talking of politics of so that I can put food on the table, so that I can walk 10 kilometers to a clinic, when we should be talking about how a how well stocked is that clinic? Um, how much of the equipment that are needed for a theater are mm. in that uh, uh, mini hospital? Now, just to make it more easier to understand, Chibombo district, where Kembe constituency sits, is one of the oldest districts in Zambia. It is older than the district of Kapirimponshi. It is older than the district of uh, Chisamba. And uh, I stand to be corrected, maybe other districts have been born out of Chibombo district. And in Chibombo district, we have two constituencies, uh, Katuba constituency uh, as well as Kembe constituency. Yet, there is no general hospital in that district or in our two constituencies. And when you look at the population, and I hope that we are going to do a census, because one of the challenges we have as a country how are you going to plan if you even failed to do a census? Because a census is simply counting what is your population as a country, what is the population of Kembe constituency or any other constituency, and then you are able to tailor your development or the allocation of your resources in an equitable manner. Now, if you don't even know, I can, even as a member of parliament, because I don't have the statistics from the statistical office, I s just speculate that Kembe constituency is uh, around 200,000 people. Now, that's a lot of uh, people, and maybe it's more than, maybe it's 250, maybe it's 300,000 people, but they don't have a, a general hospital, they don't have... Um, a lot of uh, the anonymities that come with a good school. So I, I, I find it difficult not to say that they didn't uh, give us few clinics. I think there were two clinics. And some of these clinics were done so poorly. Kelvin, you, you come to a clinic like Mundu Clinic, for example, or even uh, Mayota Clinic. Mm. It looks like a hut, like a small house, okay? And if you asked how much they spent on that clinic, I don't have the correct figures right now, you will find that there is a discrepancy in terms of 
the money that was spent and the product, the end product that came out. And in some cases, you find that the clinics were built quite all right. But the, the, the nurses, we didn't have. The clinicians, we still do not have. Some of them were sent to these places and there's no house. So how is a staff uh, going to be there and really serve the people rightly if they don't have the right accommodation? This was so rampant in the Ministry of Health. It is so rampant in the Ministry of uh, Education. And these are your hands-on people. You become a journalist, broadcaster, member of parliament, president, because you went through the hands of a teacher, you once got sick and went to, to seek medical attention, but these are the least paid people in our country. These are the least pay, uh, looked after people. I argue that if I had a way, and I hope somehow that those are advising His Excellency are listening now, we need to take care of uh, our health uh, staff. You cannot have a situation where some of the health staff are on vo voluntary basis. Nurses on voluntary basis. A lot of times I went to UTH, they would come to you, Madam, if you can help us get a permanent job. <laughs> you are a nurse mm. and you are not, no, 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 I'm just volunteering. Where on earth would you pe put people's lives in the hands of these qualified nurses, uh, qualified, um, uh, you know, the people who take x-rays, mm. uh, what do you call them, uh, radiographers, mm. on voluntary basis? So I believe that there, might, there, there, there had to be some kind of infrastructure. We can give it to the PF government. But I think they were shortchanging the people of Zambia. In the first place, they were building things not worth the amount they were spending, which means a lot of money went in people's pockets. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Because we have all built a house somewhere or you have done some kind of construction somewhere. We all know what it costs to build. But somehow, they'll justify so much expenditure on a product that doesn't look like the amount they're talking about. The same thing happened with the roads. No one was complaining about building the roads. Let's be clear. It is the quality of those roads. It is the amount they were spending on those roads. The same road or the same kilometers were much wider in other neighboring countries and they were much cheaper in other neighboring countries. And the quality, because you know there is a thickness, mm. there are different dimensions, they are well done that generations to come will not have to repeat themselves. But yet here in Zambia, we were being shished. Why are you talking? Can't you see the roads? Can't you see the the bridges? Okay, once you do the over, what do you call them? The, the fly, over bridges. fly over bridges or viaducts, the, they may not qualify as viaducts. Because when you look at the viaducts in Canada, for example, or in New York, and I'm not saying we have to get there mm. uh, just now, but you don't end just with the flyover bridge. You have to create now the outlet roads because otherwise then you find the, the congestion at their end. So really, what really messed up the PF government? There was too much corruption. You didn't need a FIC report. You didn't need the anti-corruption report. It is just by looking at the money they were spending and the input they had put in and the products that were coming out. Look at the road just nearby you here, the, the one that leads to the Parliament Motel. Mm. Look at the road that goes to Kabulonga. They have made a lot of blunders. It wasn't long ago we were talking about the flyover bridge near ZNBC. And yes, also the that, and there was so much concentration, and I'm not saying it was a bad idea to have roads in uh, the capital city, but Zambia is vast, and the biggest part of Zambia is in rural areas. And when you look at the National Development Plan, if we are serious about developing this country called uh, Zambia, a very beautiful country with so much resources, endowed with wonderful, hardworking people, we have to ensure that we do not just develop the capital cities or, or the urban areas. We have to also develop the districts, the, 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 the small towns, the villages or the rural areas, so that 
people in rural areas don't have to feel like there has to be a flight to the urban areas and secondly it is the only way you develop as a country if you don't do that mm. you have an imbalance and whenever there is an imbalance in the way you're treating people there's always a dissatisfaction and that is why governments are usually voted out let's talk about the issues of education i'm, I'm happy that uh, you, you, you you've touched uh, you, a little bit about the issues of uh, education when i talk about issues of education and uh, thinking of Kembe, the first thing or the name that comes into my mind is Mukalashi. Uh, <laughs> equally, uh, the past administration posted that they have, uh, you know, built uh, uh, schools and uh, also teachers' accommodation. Let's talk about Kembe. Kembe is one of the biggest constituencies, and I'll continue to talk about this because this is a very first fact, or this is what is on the ground. Issues of 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 education schools being taken closer to villages and also teachers accommodation where are we now in camp well it's a it's a sorry sight uh, when you talk of mokalash itself again through my uh, uh, lobbying skills we have lobbied uh, through fountain of life they have built the first clinic since independence or pre-independence because that was a pre-independence you know where we were colonized there has never been a clinic in the mukalashi area now mukalashi is the famous john chinena area mm. okay because when you say that name almost every zambian especially the men mm. Mm. Uh, then their eyes bubble out it's just a name mm. that area is so unique in the sense that uh, the people that are there they're very uh, very business minded and very hard working people but not only that a lot of accidents and again this is the lack of right priorities especially with the former government i was on record and this can be seen in the journals in parliament that we need a dual carriage road from is it in dola uh, or Luansha, depending on which road you're using up to lusaka because the the accidents that have been happening I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling, and yet the, the, the previous government seems not to do anything about it. And what was even more heartbreaking, when the accidents happened from Kabwe somewhere before you reach L uh, Landry's Corner, a lot of people were rushed to, uh, to Liteta Hospital, but that is a distance. We lost a lot of lives, mm. and yet there was never a clinic there. So through the lobbying and organization like Fountain of Life Africa, now there will be uh, a clinic which was built at around, uh, is it 500,000 uh, kwacha uh, above, and they've put up houses as well, and also they have put up a wonderful maternity clinic. This will not just benefit the people of John Chinena or Mukalashi, but also in an if uh, unforeseen event or circumstance that someone has an accident they can be rushed to that clinic so these are some of just a few successes that i am proud to be part of but the school mukalashi school itself is mm. still struggling we did try to buy a few materials with the erratic cdf that was given but that wasn't enough again we are using Kembe and the people of Kembe, uh, I, as I call them, the Kembians, as an example. But I think we have to be mindful, especially for me as a member of parliament. I have to realize that though I am chosen by the people of Kembe, I represent the country of Zambia. Yes. And it's difficult to talk for the old Zambians, but I have a heart for people in rural areas. Mm. If you cut me, I think there are a few areas that I'll bleed for. It's the people in the rural areas, it is women, it is children. And of course, now everyone wants to say youths. Mm. It is so critical that we take care of the discrepancies that are there because at the end of the day, the reason why we are even maybe going backwards, even when you look at leadership of women, this 2021 election, we have to accept as Zambians that we didn't do well when it comes to women in leadership, Indeed. especially in politics. Indeed. Look at my own constituency, Kembe. I am ashamed. And this has become my new mantra. Wherever I am speaking, especially with all the celebration going on in my 13 words, is where are the women? Because it's the challenge we have, we may celebrate a female vice president and we are so proud of her and she's full of integrity and I think she sets the bar high for us. Now we are talking of the, the speaker of the house mm. of parliament. Uh, sh we are so proud of her. I mean she has a sterling uh, resume, the second deputy speaker. But the challenge you have, you have only 20 
members of parliament, 10 from UPND who are female, mm. 9 from PF, and one independent yes. given capital. Mm. That is not good for the country. Now, I don't know what 20, uh, 20 out of 156 is in terms of percentage, but for a, a gender activist like me, for a, someone who has stood up and spoken for women and girls, that is a sorry uh, situation. When I look at my local government, that is the councillors that uh, I am the member of parliament of, mm. They are all men. Out of 13? Out of 13. All of them are men? All of them are men. In Kembe? In Kembe, where the activists <laughs> on the women issues... And, 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 and honorable one may ask, say, what is it that is What's stopping women uh, from participating in, uh, in, yeah. uh, in, you know, in, in politics? Yeah. You are a woman. Yeah. You are com you're, you're coming back to yeah. parliament, second term. Yes. What is it that is stopping other women not to emulate you? And jump uh, on the bandwagon. I think let's take this subject in details or mm. dissect the issues and I'm not going to speak to all the issues that affect women because I'll, I'll, I'll be lying if I say I can speak for all women but these are just samples of my observation. Mm. I have argued that is why you cannot speak about women when you haven't spoken about the girls. You cannot speak about the girls without talking about women. We go together. Mm. And so the, 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 the culturization of girls in this country is still so patriarchal that my son, Kulangila, you know, my son who mm. is six and just started uh, uh, grade one, can be allowed to play soccer, take a break, do his homework, while my daughter or my niece, who I'm keeping, has to be busy in the kitchen and then maybe go and draw water. Even in Lusaka, this is not just in Kembe, for instance, or in rural areas. So already as we are indoctrinating our children, we need to look at that. One of the things I've tried to do in my own household is today the boys are cooking, tomorrow they are sweeping, and the girls are going to wash the car. You know, because if we do not do that, we are already setting our girls at a very disadvantaged beginning because we are setting a tone that you are only good for the housework and the kitchen while the boys can go out and do other things. I think we are at a place where though we are different genders mm. and uh, we may have uh, different strengths, there's no doubt about that, we are all made equal in the image of God. And so the way we parent our children I think is very critical. Uh, secondly, Statistics have shown, and this is there, Kelvin, if you came with me or went to any, I mean, I've been to Luapula, I have been in other places in the southern province in rural areas, and many other places, you will find that when the children are starting school, that is first grade, mm. I mean, you can talk about, uh, 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 what do you call it, Free preschool, mm. uh, but I'm talking about usually in Zambia, if for the ordinary people, it's usually grade, grade one. one. The girls are men in those classes. As they get to grade five, they're still holding on. Mm. But something around grade five, grade six, grade seven changes. They have dropped out of school, either because the parents preferred the boy to continue if they had very little resources, which is very common, or the girl got pregnant, and there are many reasons. I was a teenage mother myself. Some of it is because you're like, hey, how am I going to support myself? But sometimes it's just the peer pressure and so on. So you find that already the girls are getting fewer. And so by the time we get into this conversation of who's going to be a counselor, you have fewer women really even qualified, especially with this uh, grade, grade 12 equivalent. Mm. I, I'm not saying we should go back to the, fo to the former, but there is just something that is taking away for some of the people who may be the best candidates in those areas. But because of this grade 12 equivalent, which we have hold on to, I'm sure for good reasons, but we are neglecting other people who never had the opportunity, not because they didn't want to go to school, but because of circumstances and they've denied the opportunity to be part of the governance. Now, there are also women who are already learned. Because of the way we have structured our parliament in Zambia, where you have to go full throttle with the boys, okay, mm. or with the guys, it's not easy, especially with the former uh, ruling party. They had introduced violence in this country. I mean, I came on this show before, showed you how I was hacked to the machetes in 2016. Mm. 
And in 2021's election, a lot of people that I'm not going to mention names here, in broad daylight from the former ruling party, they would come with machetes, take off the, uh, the flags that people were putting. I had to restrain my youths in Kembe to say, it's not a, uh, a, a plaque or a flag that's going to vote. Just leave them. The violence would scare any person out, but more importantly, to scare women. Because women, we are thinking of our children. We are thinking of our grandchildren. We are thinking of, I can't overrun the men. Mm -hmm. So violence has contributed to women not participating. And also the lack of preparation. You know, Oprah said something which I think is true. Success is only when it means preparation. It means preparation. Because if I am not educated, and I have reminded my people in Kembe, not meaning you are not educated, mm. and an opportunity comes. Like now, everyone is calling. Not that I'm an HR or I'll be in a position to look for jobs for people, but I have a mouth. If I heard of uh, jobs being offered somewhere, of course I want to tell the people in Kembe constituents. But then you will find that most of them are say, what qualifications do you have? I did my grade 9. I did my grade 12. And the stories are numerous. You'll be so heartbroken for them, but you already see that they're going to be cut off. Mm. So all these issues have contributed to lack of participation of women, but also we need uh, instru uh, institutional instruments, whether it will be through the constitution, whether it will be some kind of uh, uh, party commitment in our different parties, because we are a democratic party, but all parties have to find a way of committing that maybe they will be deliberate. Of course, not just because you are a female, but because you have the qualities and the same standard that men are judged on, women should be judged on the same standard. Mm. Why is it that uh, uh, a woman who has been married maybe three, four, five times during campaign, that become an issue. When a man who has been married ten times, that is not an issue. So the biasness also towards women is real. You know, it's real. They're going to look, what are you wearing? The man will just come in anything, really, and it's okay. So I think we need to to re rewind or reboot our thinking because we have a lot of hard-working women out there. Mm. And I think statistics show that where there are more women, whether it's in cabinet, where, whether it's in governance issues, whether it's just in boardrooms. And Ban Ki-moon, the former Secretary General, was very deliberate in speaking to the need of women to be in these governing roles because it is argued that wherever there are more women, we see a lot of development because women tend to overdo them themselves because at the back of our mind we know that we're going to be judged harshly mm. so in so doing we do more and so we need let, more let, let's talk about uh, issues to do with agriculture i know you in kembe there are farmers there and we've been told that the next billionaires that um no africa and the world will be producing will be coming from farmers or farmers are the ones that are going to to become billionaires um what is it are you comfortable with it when it comes to issues of farming Let's talk about women in the new dawn. What sort of incentives or what is it that they should do, government and also women, so that among the billionaires that mm -hmm. will start producing, will start producing female or women in, in, in farming? So uh, I am not an expert in farming, mm. but by virtue of being a Cambian, mm. <laughs> uh, I have been exposed to farming. Yes. And uh, I love gardening uh, at a very small scale slash backyard kind mm. of gardening. So it is part of farming. I am realizing that uh, one of the areas that we need to venture in as women is, uh, is it called cattle ranching? Mm. Where it's more of uh, keeping animals. I think it is a, uh, a business or a farming sector that we have left more for men. And uh, what it means that uh, women have to own land. And our land policies are very weak in this country. Uh, so we need to look at our land policies so that women, not only in cooperatives, of course cooperatives would be great, but sometimes at an individual level where they can own land and they can maybe rare cattle for example and they'll be able to transport the, their their cattle and also to avoid this issue of middle middle people mm. but I, I think it's not much into the uh, animal 
uh, rearing and then of course there's the fish farming now mm. that everyone is talking about all these are part of the um, the, the, the spheres of uh, farming uh, you know or agriculture and uh, not necessarily just maize I find the issue of farming in Zambia when you talk about it just to be more concentrated on maize but especially in the Kembe constituency I have to say and uh, these are mostly small farmers we have few big farmers but those big farmers should graduate mm. uh, to commercial farmers why can't we have ordinary Zambians Kembians in particular and many other places where there's farming in eastern province where they can have the the incentive to buy the ir irrigation uh, irrigating machines mm. so that they can move to that level and those who are peasant farmers can also move to that uh, middle ground or middle entry or middle level and uh, what you see is that um, and statistics also has shown that those that are very hard working those that pay back the loans when it comes to agriculture were the women mm. they did the back uh, the, 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 the the hard work they broke their back for it but when it comes to guess who goes to the bank it was discovered that the men went to the bank mm. okay in a traditional sense some even married the three four wives so that not only do they have a lot of women to go and work in the field but also they'll have a lot of children mm. to go and work in the field so i think what needs to be done is to uh, make a farming a lucrative uh, especially also to look at that it's not just about maize uh, i personally i only grew like I mean, it's a shame, but 10 bags of sunflower. I, I just wanted to break out of the norm, mm. you know, uh, that it wasn't just about maize. And a lot of people did cry foul that uh, actually in the maize uh, farming, there wasn't much profit, especially with the former government, where there were a lot of middle, uh, middle what do you call them? Middlemen. Middlemen or middle women. Mm. And a lot of our farmers, especially in Chief Chitanda area, where we have these big farmers, have been swindled. And today I got a call from my professional assistant, uh, Mr. Longu, uh, that uh, people in Itumbwe, this is where some of your big farmers are in Kembe constituency, they don't have even the empty bags. FRA is, hasn't sent enough empty bags. Uh, to these farmers so I think now that I'm here actually it's a good question can we have those bags mm. and also can we look into how much really goes in in producing a 50 kg bag of mess and how much are we really setting the uh, the floor price on I don't know where the president will take this but we are in good hands he's a farmer himself mm. he he does a lot of uh, cattle uh, ranching and stuff like that um, so I think we have a lot to learn but I want to encourage women and I'm trying to encourage myself to go more into the cattle ranching L L let's talk about empowerment we saw the past administration you know posting on the issue of uh, empowerment and we saw women um, the young people we saw the youths are being empowered but also we saw you the UPND when you are in the opposition said this is not the right way to do empowerment we can do it better let's talk about women and uh, when it comes to issues of empowerment are you satisfied with the kind of empowerment that women are receiving or how should we do proper and credible empowerment moving forward i may not have the details in terms of the technicalities of how to go about it but clearly it was a failure on the former government in terms of the way they distributed their empowerment. I once went to Ministry of uh, Community Development mm. uh, to go and uh, have my women registered and uh, there were groups that were registered there and uh, also there was a here money that was supposed to be given to individuals who had shown uh, uh, the capacity to run businesses mm unless i am mistaken we never heard from them this is just one ministry okay and uh, secondly i uh, also have you oriented these people because if you are going to give me look if i see a ten thousand kwacha at my level it doesn't do anything mm. now but i clearly remember kelvin one time i was so poor that somebody gave me a twenty dollars in today's world, twenty dollars would be about what? Uh, is it a, a three hundred kwacha? I was over the moon. I knew I could buy a bag of millimil. 
I could buy salad, mm. uh, uh, not a 2.5, but that bottle, mm. and then maybe a few things. So it is the way the, the, the empowerment was being distributed. The biggest thing that I think the PF government will forever be remembered for, in unfortunate words, they were a one-sided kind of development. If you are part of their club, if you are part of their members of parliament, if you were in a region where they thought you were a, re a, a region in support of them, you saw a lot of maybe that kind of empowerment. I would even take it that the women may have uh, received some empowerment in those areas. Mm. But an area like Kembe constituency, which actually, truth be told, is a swing constituency. It is for the first time that the people of Kembe are in the ruling government. And it is the second time that the UPND have actually won in uh, Kembe. So this notion of thinking, oh, because you're in central province, then you automatically wear UPND, was not correct. And that is why uh, uh, the, His Excellency, uh, the President, uh, Haka Inde Ichilema, and of course the Vice President, and I'm sure those that will be put in cabinet, they are going to be deliberate. And you have seen the signal that he's already sending, that in this new dawn, it is going to be equal distribution. It's going to be about equity. It's not about who voted for me. Because really, truth be told, it's tempting. Mm. Even as a member of parliament to say, I'm just going to go where I was voted for. Mm. I have some stubborn areas. They happen to be the water areas uh, where the river, Lukanga River, uh, passes, passes through. through. Mm. And you know, most of these people are our friends from, uh, from uh, Luapula and uh, other places who are very good at uh, uh, fishing. Mm. And they haven't voted for me in, uh, to, in both elections. In 2016 and 2021? Yes. No matter how you go there, they will say, hey, vote, the next thing you know, they haven't voted. It's very tempting for you to say, I'm not going to take development there. But are you a leader then? Then you are not. Actually, if I was president, if I was in a position to take so much uh, development, I'll take it to those people. Because you can see that they are so neglected, they don't have the right resources, because they're living around the water bodies, so you find that uh, there's a lot of uh, swamp areas around them, so it's even to make a road is difficult. A lot of the children didn't go to school, and it can be, happens to be one of the, the places or central province with very low literacy levels. So we need to improve on our education as well, but that means we need to have better access to education. I hope we get to free education, but even if we don't, can we make strides towards that? Because you cannot just go in a what is it called a uh, rapid shock because it's just like what the dollar has done where it's too much of a big shock from 22 quarter to a dollar to 15 uh, quarter when anything happens so rapidly you are going to have not good shocks it's good that it comes slowly down until you get there because one of the challenges you'll find is that people are complaining i bought this stock on all the on all what uh, dollar rate even some may be telling stories now i can't sell it cheaper than that so how do we help those and how do we monitor um i, I know i've veered off but i think what i'm saying is that Sometimes we need to go to the places where people didn't vote for us and it takes a big heart. And I'm glad that this president is really all about servant leadership. Mm. I have always argued, you remember when I used to come, especially those uh, early times, mm. I've always argued that I'm not a politician but I am a leader. And I've always argued also that uh, leaders are not just politicians. In any case, you overrate the politicians. And hence, you create them as small guards. And that is why it's easy to be taken advantage of. When a, an individual become a politician, they are just human beings who have just been given a different kind of office. Like you are in your office, politicians are in their office. And I think someone put it rightly, was it Neva Smumba, Dr. Neva Smumba said, we always have to remember that the offices we hold are expiring. Literally, every day you wake up, mm. already, my office, the five years that I've been given, is already expiring. And I think if we can uh, look at leadership in a manner that we are all leaders, even all Zambians, it's not just your head money or the elder in the church, even you, 
you are a leader in your own way there is someone that is looking up to you there's someone who's going to be influenced by you and my argument or my school of thought is that or ideology or theology however you call it is that all of us have to look at ourselves as leaders and then there is always someone looking up to you to learn something or there's someone you can always give mm. so if we can look at our lives like that i think we'll take the resources of this nation in a more equitable manner and that is my hope that is what i hope to see did i see that in the previous government no but i don't want to concentrate much on them mm. i want to talk about uh solutions and how we move forward especially as we look at women but also kelvin even though i'm a a, a, a renowned advocate for women and girls it is important to underscore that we have to be advocate for all children we have to be advocates for all youths because if we girls get more educated and we leave our men behind we leave our our boy children behind we are creating the same problem so yes we needed to advocate for women we needed to advocate for girls and we will continue to do that but it also have to be taken in a balanced manner L list we create another problem mm. where there are more men who can't find jobs while their wives are working not to say that it's it's problematic for you to be a house husband kelvin i think it's okay because sometimes opportunities means that i'm the one who's working and you are not mm. but also it shouldn't become a situation where more men are out of work and more women are working because the burden will forever be there so can there be a balance Let's talk about, I know you are not a politician and also listening to... Even though I'm on a political platform. Yes, on a political <laughs> platform. An but umbrella. But you are a leader, you're not a politician. <laughs> but let me just try to, 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 to squeeze you mm. and uh, try to get something from you um, on, on issues of politics. You, the UPND, when you are in the opposition, you talked about corruption, mm. rampant corruption in the PF. And now... The other day, the president labored to explain, to say, when I said I've forgiven those, you know, that um, served in the previous administration, people are now saying I've cut a deal or I've entered into a deal to forgive those that stole from the Zambian people, but they need to pay back. Issues of corruption. Now that you're in the ruling party, you're a member of the ruling mm -hmm. party. Issues of corruption. How should it be handled for those that are perceived to have stolen from the Zambian people and also those that are now in the ruling party, your fellow members of parliament, how should they, you know, handle themselves when it comes to issues of corruption? I think uh, what is important is for all of us to realize that greed lies in all of us. You know, one of the things that becomes very good as you mature or get older, people don't say getting old anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm 45, I say I'm getting older, not old. Mm -hmm. I'm a grandmother, uh, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, with my... Uh, Congratulations. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, he's one now, mm -hmm. so it's been some time. Prince Jaime, he's my namesake, mm -hmm. uh, but he has Spanish roots, so he has the Jaime, which is gems. Um, you realize that we all have weaknesses. And I think one of the strengths of maturing in life uh, as you get older, hopefully you get wiser, is that knowing your weaknesses and then how do you minimize them or offset them with what are your strengths. Of course, I come from the school of thought that you shouldn't focus much on your weaknesses, but being aware of them is very critical. So I think what is important for every leader, for every politician, and really for every person, is that greed lies in all of us. And because greed lies in all of us, I have to consistently make a deliberate decision not to feed the greed in me. Because truth be told, from the time we are born, we are in a battle of to do what is good and what is wrong. And depending on what we feed the most, mm. it is what becomes of us. And of course it is habitual and later it becomes character. So I think for me the issues of corruption I am not the president, by the way, as you know. Mm. <laughs> but I believe, and I'm not going to speak for him. I think he is well he, mm. to, to explain himself. Mm. What I believe that he was beginning to speak to, or he's trying to speak to us, is not to go after people just out of hate or just out of spite. 
but it is to allow the institutions that are responsible, whether that's the law, the courts, whether that's the 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 ones who do the FIC yeah, reports, the anti-corruption, anti mm. to do their job with teeth. Not because they've been told by state house or by the minister, but because it is their mandate. And when you are found wanting, princess. Either you are asked to be given amnesty and pay in one year, and if you cannot pay, then uh, something there is a second punishment. But I don't believe you can leave people who have stolen scot free. Then you are setting a wrong precedence. I think one of the, and I don't know what kind of punishment they have given to people who were found to be ailing, it is uh, Singapore, I believe. Uh, one of the politicians there or the leader was saying, you have to set a standard of if you do this, is wrong. But if you don't set a standard, then everyone is going to say, well, I'm just going to be, uh, what do you call the slapping, just given a slap by the fingers, and you go with your life. So I don't think that's what the president is saying, but I believe that maybe he is saying, and I hope he is saying, that there will be need to be investigated, and it won't be out of spite, it will be out of, this is questionable. And if I can explain that well, you know, even though I was a member of parliament, I was doing some speaking engagements, and I can show you a tray of uh, how money came in, uh, of course, then I'm well to go. Mm. So, but I think in Zambia also, we have this problem, where don't take him to prison because he's your relative. Even though the sin is so grave, or you who has taken someone who stole from you, especially if they're related to you, you are seen as the bad one, and the person who stole is seen to be, they need to be let scot free. How are they going to learn? I don't know what punishment they need to be given, depending on the gravity of what they have stolen. Because if we do not set a standard of to say, to steal, this will happen to you, then there will be no standard. So there has to be some kind of uh, um, measures or kind of punishment given to people who deliberately, if you explained you didn't know, because you can be given papers to sign and you didn't know, maybe well and good. But I think there has to be retribution. Mm. Uh, Honorable, we have to go. And um, let me just allow you to give your concluding remarks. Uh, women in the new dawn, as uh, we go. You don't tell me that we have covered an hour. We have covered an hour. Oh, my goodness. Mm. I've always said, you know, my love and my passion is in broadcasting. Mm. People don't know that. I just want to say to the women out there, you know that I've been living with HIV since I learned in 1997. You know that I was a teenage mother at the age of 18. You know that I was a grade 11 dropout in school. And if I can go on to get two master's degrees, if I can go on to become a member of parliament, you can do it. I know it can be difficult, but please find us. Find anyone who can mentor you. Because one of the challenges we have as women we do not have mentors. I avail myself, and I'm sure other women avail themselves. At Parliament, we have the Women Caucus that I hope we can revive and really be focused on women issues. But more importantly, we have to see to it that the Zambia we want, we are part of the solutions. So it is on that note that I want to see more women in Parliament in 26, 2026. 20, I'll be 50 years, literally. Thank you so much, uh, Horrible, for making an appearance on the uh, on on um, the interview, and wishing you all the best. You're hoping that you are appointed as a minister. Oh wow! Okay, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Whatever happens, whoever become cabinet ministers, we wish them well and that they'll do a good job for the sake of Zambia. Thank you so much. There you have it. This has been the special interview on the Channel of Choice Movie Television today, the third of September 2021 and we've been discussing women in the new dawn. My guest, uh, Honorable Princess Kasune, who is a member of parliament, Kembe, member of parliament, one of the biggest consequences here in Zambia. On behalf of Mavuto Piri, the producer and the director of the show, Elas Chulu, uh, as well as, uh, you know, Christopher Mvula on uh, the cameras uh, upstairs, Trobish Kakono Kapalu and Gabriel Omlenga. My name is Kelvin Tabola Chifoko. Until next time, good night. Thank you so much.